Well, hello again, dear listeners. My children of the twilight hour, come to see your old pal Jack for another tale, did you? <laughs> I thought so. Well, come, come and sit by the fire and get warm. Tonight's tale is full of malice and listener discretion is advised. Without further ado, Harvest Moon Jack presents to you Dolls in the Trees. Part 1 My name is David O'Malley. Detective David O'Malley. Well, at least for a few more days. I have served on the force for over 30 years. I started as a beat cop, and I worked my way up the chain. In these past 30 years, I have seen a lot of shit. Hell, until this last case, I would have told you I'd seen it all. I was dead wrong. I was given one last case, and it showed me. Mankind knows no bounds when it comes to depravity. I should have known it was a rough case, being that I was the third to receive the case after two rookies requested to be transferred to a different one. I don't blame them, though. If only I knew what I was going to see. Hell, I would have took the early retirement. The case only had one documented victim when I was assigned to it. The report stated officers were dispatched to a wooded area by an abandoned stone quarry. On scene, officers noted that the place was littered with garbage, tires, clothes, a hanging doll, shoes, even a washer and dryer. As I was flipping through the photos, I jokingly made a statement to myself, Hey look, they even threw the kitchen sink in. I smiled at my own stupid joke, but the smile didn't last long. Turning to the next photograph, I saw a small hand laying amongst the leaves and other debris, just under the base of a large tree. The first thing I noticed was the hand was porcelain white, and the nails were painted pink. The nails looked professionally done, and appeared to have been done recently. This must be a fresh stump site. The next photograph showed a body exhumed. It was a little girl, no more than ten years of age. She was dressed in a pink dress with matching shoes and a bow holding back curly blonde hair. Though covered in dirt, the makeup that was put on her still was visible, also looking as if it was professionally done. The skin on her body was the same color as her hand in the previous photo. Stranger still, there appeared to be no sign of decay. I turned my attention to the autopsy report. The only mercy, if you could call it that, was there was no sign of rape. However, it did show that many different preservation methods were used on the body. All blood, organs, and tissues were removed and replaced with multiple different fillers. Her eyes were replaced with marbles. Even her skin and joints were treated to keep them supple. At the end of the report, it stated that due to the preservation techniques determining how long the body had been at the site, or deceased for that matter, was difficult. Their only guess for a time frame was after the poor girl's dental records showed that she was from two towns over and had been missing for over a year. While still sitting at my desk, I was trying to wrap my head around why anyone would go through this trouble of not only killing a child, but doing all the work to the body just to throw it out like trash. Truthfully, I can't understand any of it. And in all honesty, I don't think I would want to understand a mind that is capable of such atrocities. As I let my mind ponder while looking through all the evidence, I couldn't help but realize how much she looked like a doll. Immediately, 
I went back to the first few photos I looked through when I got the case. There, hanging above where the body had been buried, was a doll. The doll looked like the victim. I thought to myself, how the hell did we miss this? And what else did we miss? I went back to the dump site to do my own investigation. It didn't take me long to realize. The site was much larger than it was stated in the report. There was also clear evidence that no one had been monitoring the crime scene evident by the new mounds of trash. My blood began to boil at the lack of the professionalism or sense of care previously on this case. As I was looking around, observing the area, a chill crawled up my spine and my heart caught in my throat. Just around a hundred feet away, from the initial dump site stood another tall tree with a doll hanging from its branches. I stood steadfast, my body refusing to move as if knowing what I was about to see. What was probably a few seconds seemed like hours as I made my way to the tree. As I stood by what I feared was another dump site, movement caught my attention in the direction of the stone quarry. What I saw will haunt me for the rest of my days. All I could say was a silent prayer. I radioed in all the backup and crews available. The whole time, never taking my eyes off, all the dolls as they gently swayed in the breeze. Well... It would appear Detective O'Malley has his hands full. If you would like to know how this story ends, don't forget to tune in next week. But alas, my dear children of the twilight hour, the sun is rising and I must leave you. If you enjoyed this tale, like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon. If you are listening to our podcast, don't forget to like and follow. And until next week, dear, dear listeners, remember this. If you hear a sound in the middle of the night, don't go investigating. Not all the creatures of the night are as friendly as your old pal, Jack. Jack.